Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for days two of Greater Manchester Careers Week Virtual Careers Fair. Um, today we'll be discussing a career in the customer service and retail sector um, with presentations from featured employers with live jobs, training providers and support services talking about live training courses, apprenticeships and work experience placements. Plus, we'll be hearing from some industry experts talking about what a day in the life of their jobs involve and some of their success stories to help inspire you to take on a career in customer service and retail. Um, before we get started with a very busy event schedule for this morning, please be aware that today's event is hosted as a live event on Microsoft Teams, which means that only the presentation and the guest speakers are visible. So don't worry too much about having your camera phone or microphone muted. Um, we'll be recording the session to be made available on YouTube later today. So if there's anything that you find particularly useful, you'll be able to come back and watch it again later or share it online. Um, for the next hour and a half, we'll be following this event schedule. Um, so we'll be hearing starting off with some customer insights on labour market trends. Um, before hearing from some training providers and um, this morning we have got um, Juniper, um, Plato Training, um, GP Strategies and Street League, um, followed by um, presentations from um, some fantastic employers. Uh, we have Concentrix, the growth company, Service Expert, Job for Teens and hopefully at the end we'll be able to add in Vitality as well. Um, as an introduction to um, it, today's event, um, it's part of National Careers Week and there are some fantastic resources available online by visiting their website nationalcareersweek.com. They've got a featured TV channel with um, employer videos from across the sector where you can find out about the jobs that they're recruiting for, um, apprenticeship schemes that they've got on offer and lots of different sectors across the customer service remit which we'll be covering a little bit more about shortly. Um, in Greater Manchester there's some fantastic events taking place via ourselves and Bridge GM so be sure to check them out online by following the hashtag GMCW 2021. Um, as part of today's event we've put together a range of resources to help you um, including skills builder profiles to help you understand what you're good at and where that could take you, um, career roadmap planning tools, free CV templates, employer evaluation sheets to jot down notes on everything that you've heard today, Plus, you can also download our particip our, a participation certificate that you can take into your careers advisor, work coach or training provider to get them to sign to show that you've taken part in this week's events. Um, after the event today, we'll also be sending around an information pack containing links to all of the live jobs that you've heard about, the featured employer listings, the training provider profiles, uh, the guest speaker details and the course information um, so that you um, can access all of that information and book on the courses and apply for the live jobs. As mentioned, you'll also be able to revisit the YouTube videos too. Um, all this information and more can be found on our website stockport-jobsmatch.co.uk forward slash career development um, together with over 300 um, um, careers advice articles and guides on careers in different sectors and over 3000 job vacancies for you to apply for right now within Stockport and across Greater Manchester. Um, you might find it useful to register for a free account so that you can bookmark articles and jobs and come back to them later on. Um, so first up today, we're going to um, cover off some um, career insights and labour market trends about a career in the customer service sector. Um, so it's had a mixed outlook over the course of the last 12 months. Um, there has been high demand in some areas, as we're all aware of, and the surge in um, supermarket shopping. Um, and online deliveries, whereas there has been redundancies in other areas such as accommodation, food services and hospitality. Um, for the period just gone, so November 2020 to January 2021, job vacancies were 
26% lower than the previous year, but up drastically compared to the period over the summer. So there was strong growth of 60% increase in jobs, which shows that that recovery has already started to happen. There was almost 600,000 jobs advertised, which again is an increase of 64,000 on the previous quarter. And we expect that to rise quite a bit more as the retail sector reopens over the coming months and we're able to start considering a return to office environments for those who are currently still based from home. Um, as part of that, over the last 12 months, there's been a continued growth in the average employee pay, uh, which is a good indication for the sector as part of the bounce back. Um, and as mentioned, that outlook is very positive over the course of the next 12 months as those shops reopen and we're all able to get back and there'll be an increase in consumer spending. So in terms of ro role pro profiles and where a career in customer service could take you, it's incredibly broad. Um, there's a wide range of industries, as you can see on the right hand side within the customer service sector, ranging from everything from banking and financial services through to travel and tourism. And there's a huge range of roles available within retail and sales generally. Um, it's a really good idea if you are interested in, in a specific role within these sectors to go online to either sites like National Career Service or Prospects, where you can click onto the job descriptions and view what these roles typically involve, the entry requirements and the specific skills required. It's also useful if you have an idea in mind of the type of job that you want to perform to go onto job boards and search for those types of vacancies, click on the job descriptions, see what the application requirements are and then you've got a good idea of what you need to work towards in your career. Um, so once you have a career in um, customer service and retail, what are the benefits? What can it offer you in terms of career prospects? Well, the main bonus of working within the customer service sector is a huge amount of job satisfaction. Um, you'll be working with customers on a daily basis, making a direct impact to their customer journey. Um, and most roles now are for very customer centric organisations that are passionate about brands. So you feel that sense of customer loyalty and employee loyalty for representing one of those brands. Um, most of the roles offer fantastic job perks and um, staff discounts and great benefits being amongst them as fantastic as well as um, training and great working environments. Um, there's also a massive amount of variety. As we mentioned, you can work across many industries with that focus on customer satisfaction at its heart um, with varied duties as well. And there are good career prospects um, within retail. They tend to be quite structured as you work through a career ladder um, and in broader customer service roles, it tends to be through um, training and experience as you require as you acquire um, specific product or service expertise in a particular area. They also tend to have flexible hours as a 24 seven always on industry um, and much of it now being online. Um, it means that there are some great opportunities to work flexibly about around other commitments that you might have. And as mentioned already, there's a real jobs growth. So it's a very good sector to establish your career in with lots of potential for growth. In terms of the entry requirements, they vary massively depending on the type of customer service role you're looking to step into and the sector that you're looking to be based in, um, whether that be a, a barista or a car, car salesperson, as we put an example. Um, the skills, that, however, remain the same for the vast majority. They tend to be confidence, great communication skills, uh, but can range right through to physical, um, physical um, strength and foreign languages. So be sure to check out those job descriptions as we've mentioned. Um, the entry requirements um, vary for each role. Um, some within certain sectors require specific experience um, and training, uh, whereas others you can um, step into the role with no experience required and gain on the job training as you go along. Um, job vacancies and how to find a vacancy within customer service or retail. Um, they tend to be advertised in the local press job centre um, local and national jobs boards, but more and more they're going to be on social media websites as employers take ownership of their own brands. Um, lots of organisations now have their own um, Twitter careers pages where you can find out more about their jobs 
and many are um, organising live events to um, showcase day in the life position. So it's a good idea to check those out as part of events like these that come up from time to time. Um, there's also lots of opportunities to volunteer uh, within um, charity retail vacancies as well as start apprenticeships or traineeships and we're going to hear about a couple of those opportunities shortly. Um, so we're going to move on now to um, training providers and we're going to hear from um, Kat over at Juniper. Hello. 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 There we go. There you are Kat. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hi everybody, good morning. Um, I'm Kat, um, I'm a recruitment officer at Juniper Training. Um, I've got another job as well, so and that, which is in customer service. I'm a beauty uh, therapist and, and aesthetic practitioner. So I, I have got a bit of experience in customer service as well. Okay, so Juniper. Um, we're an independent training provider uh, focusing on securing outcomes uh, for 16 to 24 year olds into employment, apprenticeships, and further education. Uh, we've been going since 1983, so we've got 35 years of experience in the sector, and we support over 2,500 students uh, per year across 13 delivery sites. Um, we're mainly based in the Midlands, um, but we filter up to Stockport. I, I'm in the Stockport office, um, and um, we're registered as a good provider by Ofsted. Okay, um, we're also an approved apprenticeship training provider as well. Now, when I first came to Juniper, which was a year ago, um, I felt like it was a very family family kind of feel. Everybody knows everybody's name. It's very small classrooms, uh, attendees. Um, so my experience of Ju Juniper, um, it's like cheers, everybody knows your name. So when you do actually come to us, uh, you'll feel that you're not just a little pin in in, in, a, in a really big company, you are actually, um, we know your name and it does feel like a family kind of feel. Okay, um, now with regards to, next slide please, sorry. Okay, so with regards to our customer service career path, it's 30 week study programme um, and you can also pick up the your maths and English GCSE. Um, or functional skills depending on what grade you got in your GCSE. Um, we do the level two customer service qualification um, with our lovely Heather, the tutor that does, does it here. Um, and what I found is the tutors are so approachable, nothing's too much problem. And when, when you do have a if you do have an issue, then it's sorted out quite quickly. Um, so your level two customer service, um, it does include work experience, not obviously not at the moment, but it, that seems to change. Um, and work experience goes a long way on your CV um, with regards to maybe getting an apprenticeship or um, going on to further employment. Um, it really does uh, help you to, uh, to, to, to succeed. Okay, so who's eligible for this? Um, 16 to 18 year olds. I rather probably got to be 18 when you start, but you can't be any older. Um, and you can't be in um, full time employment. Um, you, you've got to commit to us. Okay. It's a monthly intake, so it's a roll on, roll off program. Um, and unlike, unlike college, you start in September and finish in June or May. Um, it's not like that. So you could start in March and finish 31 weeks later. Um, so we don't have any term holidays as, as such half term holidays we just have the Christmas and Easter uh, so that's why it's a faster uh, turnover. Okay so next slide please Caroline thank you. Um, so traineeships this is all new to us this traineeship um, and I've been working on them a lot over the last uh, say two weeks. Uh, they're available to 16 to 24 year olds. Um, now a lot of people think traineeships well I don't, I'm not going to get paid but the, like I was saying before, the work experience that you're going to gain on a traineeship and that qualification will probably put you in a really good position, well it will put you in a really good position to actually get onto an apprenticeship scheme. There's so many people that apply for apprenticeships um, and the traineeship seems to be like a pathway to get into your um, apprenticeships of, of what you wanted to do. Um, so yeah, it, traineeships to help you, help you develop skills and work experience to be attractive to employers. 
okay? And like I say, they are on page, and it's 16, about 18 weeks, it depends how fast uh, you actually go through the course. Um, and it's a really good stepping stone, as I say, onto your next, next bit, which is your apprenticeship or further employment. Okay. Uh, our programme is for learners, learners that are work ready, but not with learners that are, have got a lot of experience. Um, you know, they've, got, they've got to have little or no experience, work experience, to come onto the programme and be work ready. It's fine line, really. Okay. Um, so, yeah, at the moment, we're offering um, an employability online course because of the pandemic obviously this will change or will it change will we go carry on with that and we're not too sure at the moment but you, you do gain quite a lot of experience uh, with regard to the traineeship um, in these different areas of food safety awareness health and safety in the workplace manual handling lots and lots of different there um, and yes we do have a dedicated apprenticeship team now uh, at juniper um, run by somebody called Leighton and we're taking on more and more employers every week, um, which is, is, is only like a win-win situation for people to come to us to do the traineeship and to progress onto an apprenticeship. Um, so that's about it for me today. Uh, thank you for allowing me to talk about Juniper training and uh, onwards and upwards um, for the restrictions listing. Thank you, Caroline. Thanks, Catherine. Um, yeah, you can find out more about um, Juniper and all of their um, available traineeships on the Job Match website. If you go to jobs and scroll down to apprenticeships and traineeships and click on there, you'll find all of Juniper's um, current opportunities for work experience placements available. Um, you'll also be able to go to our training directory and find Juniper there to book onto one of their latest courses. Um, so next up, we have got um, Michael at Street League. Fantastic. Hi, how's it going? You OK? Um, yes, so uh, my name is Mikey uh, and I'm the Engagement and Aftercare Coordinator at Street League. Um, obviously, just want to say a thank you to everyone for, for letting us come on today um, and do a little bit of a talk on, on what we offer um, at the organisation. Um, obviously, Caroline, if you could just do a couple of clicks for me, please. I know I've, uh, I've got a little bit fancy on the animations with the uh, slideshow, but it's uh, maybe slightly backfired <laughs> today um, but there we go and um, yes yeah, so just to sort of tell you a bit about the organization we've been running since 2001 um, the organization is in 14 different regions across the UK so all the way up into Scotland all the way down into London and in between so what we do is we do it slightly different in Manchester we've got two programs we've got a study program and we've also got an academy program so just to give you a bit more information on the study programme, it's a 15 to 20 week programme that's aimed at 16 to 18 year olds. And um, Caroline, please feel free just to keep clicking through this one. Um, if you didn't get a, um, a four at GCSE, um, and we can look at working on your functional skills up to a level two, um, there'll be vocational qualifications in employability and taking part in sport. Uh, and there's opportunities for work experience with Street League, um, but also, um, looking at opportunities elsewhere uh, moving forward as well after obviously the, the lockdowns and the pandemic when more opportunities become available and for people who are interested in apprenticeships then fantastic there'll be opportunities there for people moving on to apprenticeships and before we move on to the next slide Caroline just to sort of highlight that this is a really great opportunity to upskill if you went through a school and you found that there was a lot of distractions, you struggled in the bigger groups, we definitely work in smaller groups where there's more focus, more one-to-one -one time with the tutor. And we're going for more of a quality over quantity kind of approach. We tend to find that works with the learners that we're engaging with. The one-to-one -one tuition is huge as well. So some people might be a little bit introvert, a little bit lacking in confidence. They might not sort of say if they don't understand something in a workshop. However, in the one-to-one -one tuition, it's your time to really sort of iron out anything that you're not too sure on, get that one-to-one -one time with your tutor and make sure that you're understanding the content whilst on course. Because it's not just about you being on the course, it's about you getting through the course and getting something from it. And that's massive for us as an organisation. Due to everything that's going on at the minute, there's opportunities for blended learning. We understand that maybe people going from being on a lockdown and being indoors to then going on to a four-day course for 15 to 20 weeks in centre might be too big of a jump. So we're bridging the gap, which most people are doing with blended learning, two days in centre, 
but then two days online and we can mix that. Our functional skills are virtual because our staff in other regions deliver the functional skills. So our staff are in London and, and Sheffield. Um, so it's always virtual for your functional skills moving forward. Benefits is we can obviously access a device as well. So if you haven't got a device, you haven't got access to the internet. We understand as well that I think we probably make assumptions that people can just study from home. And um, sometimes it isn't always the best space. You've got family people moving around the house. I'm currently working from home. I've got a three year old daughter. She sometimes just bursts into the room. Luckily, she's out today, so that won't happen. So I understand that things can sort of get in the way. We've also got access to say use the office, come into our office and use our office space if needs be. Um, but like I said, there is access to some technology if needs be. Uh, yeah, Caroline, we can move on to the, the Academy programme now. Thank you. And feel free, yeah, just to, to, to go through that one as well. Um, a little bit different. I don't know how many people this would be of benefit to, but I'll just give you a really quick brief overview that we work with 19 to 30 year olds as well on our Street League Academy programme. So for anyone who's seeking employment, living in Manchester, we go over employability skills. So we look at things like CV writing, application form filling, mock interviews and interview techniques. These are the core sort of, these are the core workshops that support people moving back into work. Now, if we look at things like personal development, um, very important to find out you know, what people's barriers are into employment, look at interpersonal skills, group and teamwork skills, and the health and well-being. I think due to what's happened over the past 12 months, people have found it quite difficult, quite taxing. People have definitely been struggling with the mental well-being. So we've been definitely putting on some sessions around supporting with well-being um, and also bringing in guest speakers who are you know, professionals in that field who can give really sort of sound advice and also information advice and guidance moving forward of how to get support, some coping mechanisms, so just things to support you, not only as a participant, but just as a as a human being full stop, because it's been a difficult time for everyone um, over these, like say, these past 12 months. The sport and fitness on both programmes, um, please don't feel that it's compulsory that you have to do sport and fitness. These things are optional. Um, with the street league programs there's an element of it being a little bit of a pick and mix so you know you can sort of pick and choose with certain things some things are sort of non-negotiable but definitely with the sport and fitness if you're into your sport fantastic we can get you involved in some free sessions obviously everything looks a little bit different at the minute because we're delivering online we're moving back to blended learning but we still can run fitness sessions online over platforms such as zoom uh, and the progressions into work are fantastic we do have links with different employers I was looking at these slides before Caroline thinking probably should have put the employer's slide after this would have probably worked a bit better. However, we'll get to that who we were working with just a few of the people. Uh, next slide, please, Caroline, moving on to perks. So again, yeah, it's um, we all, we go we go on programs because we want to learn because we want to progress. But who doesn't like a freebie? I'm, I'm, I'm criminal for it. I'm guilty of it. It's a free night kit. Um, some of you may not be interested, some of you maybe get free night kit for the people who get involved in the sport and fitness. It's a nice bit of kit to go at, it's the kind of stuff you'd wear if you was playing sport and fitness, you know, outside the street league or you was going to the gym. Really good kit. Travel expenses are covered, so if you're coming by, you know, train, bus, tram, whatever it may be, we'll cover your expenses. For the 16 to 18 learners, you can apply for a bursary, so you can get financial um, gain from a week to week basis, which again, if, if it's needed, we can definitely apply and look into it. And when everything gets back to some sort of version of normality, then what we'll look at is we get things like Premier League tickets, we get Champions League tickets. Um, so there's opportunities to actually go and get really good seats at football games. I've definitely been to a few games now and took full advantage of this. The only uh, the only sort of thing there is if you go in as a participant, you're a flag bearer. So you go in the middle on the Champions League and you wave the big um, football flag in the middle and get a free UEFA kit out of it, which is which is fantastic. Just on that really quick as well, our programme is about building people's confidence and self-esteem. It's about getting people into a routine and getting them motivated. And sometimes people might think, well, what's the benefit of going to a football game and flag bearing? I mean, the confidence it takes to go out in front of, you know, 60, 70,000 fans in the middle of that pitch, you know, when everyone's looking and get out there. For some people, it's such a big step with the confidence that actually we're always looking at transferable skills. How can you transfer these soft skills, such as your confidence and your self-esteem, into your next steps in life. And I do believe that confidence, self-esteem, good routine, being motivated, that's almost the foundation. Once we've got that, we can build on it and that's where we can sort of scaffold moving forward. So really good opportunities to all have transferable skills. Um, just as a bit of an overview, because I don't want this to be too wordy, um, 
if I've said something that you're thinking, yeah, you know, that sounds okay, I'm interested. I'm not expecting you to sign up to the programme today, tomorrow, the day after. I'm more just thinking, hopefully I've spiked some sort of interest for you to now think, you know what, I'll go and check out the socials. I'll maybe check out the website or, you know, get in contact over, over social media or get in contact with Caroline and ask for, you know, for my details. You can ask any questions, you know, that's very, Caroline, I've noticed I've gone past them. We'll come back to them in a minute. We'll just, we'll slide back into them in a second. And if you've got any questions, one of your questions may have been, what are the progression routes you wasn't going to say? Um, we, we've got opportunities where we get, see, we get people who, who buy into what we offer as an organisation because we're almost offering the character reference on behalf of the young people that we work with. And when I say young people, learners, um, for example, Aldi, we got an area manager getting in contact direct and say, look, we've got jobs available at Aldi. If anything, throughout this pandemic, we're hiring more staff. We need more people because there's a lot more people shopping. Definitely guilty myself of just going food shopping constantly throughout this pandemic. So they were saying, can you basically get us a few people who you can vouch for, who you can give a character reference for. There's that old cliche, isn't it? It's not always what you know, it's who you know. If you've got net, if you've networked and you've got good contacts, they're gonna to come to us and think, well, actually, I'd rather come to you guys and take five people on your word rather than interview 15 people to get to them five people or go through X amount of applications to get to them people. So We've got a really good link in with Aldi and it's the same with Amazon. We've got good links in with Amazon. They buy into what we do. They know what we support with and they know that when people finish the Street League programme, it takes commitment and we can give a really good character reference. We're linking very closely with Procure Plus as well. These guys do a lot around, it's, it's not necessarily sort of retail, but they do a lot of stuff around construction and getting your CSES card. There's opportunities going into different sectors and then the entertain the toy shop. We've had a few people go on there and work experience and some have, you know, moved into actual part-time and full-time employment and have got nothing but positive praise about them as a, as, a, as a company. So we've got some really good people on board and there is other people that, you know, we are working with. And um, so, definitely good progression routes and opportunities. Obviously this pandemic has, has presented some problems. It's definitely presented some stumbling blocks and some hurdles, but the good thing with barriers is we can always overcome them. We can always get around them. And sometimes we just have to smash through them. A testament to everyone today who's turned up, who's actually said, you know what, I'm gonna come on here today. I'm gonna to think about what am I gonna do moving forward, even for a difficult time. I'm gonna give some time this morning to listen to what people have got to say. And that's, you know, that's fantastic. So, you know, we hope to hear from you. It'd be fantastic if you did, but if you do go with someone else and you move forward, best of luck with everything that you're gonna do in the future. And obviously thank you, Caroline and Rebecca and everyone else for letting us pop on today. And if it's okay, I'll stick around for a little bit just to see what else is out there because I'm also curious. Great, that's lovely. Thanks very much, Mikey. Really interesting presentation. Um, yeah, and by all means, stick around. Um, next up, we have a presentation from um, Plato Training, who unfortunately can't join us this morning. So I'm just going to go through Natalie's slides. And what I'm going to do instead is ask her to record a short video and, and put that out hopefully like later on today or tomorrow so that you can hear from her directly. But luckily, she's done great slides, so they are quite self-explanatory. Um, and Natalie also presented yesterday on our health and social care day so I've got a good insight of what Plato offer. Um, so Plato deliver a wide range of sector-based qualifications throughout GM. Um, their courses cover a wide range of sectors. They're normally delivered three days a week um, for six to eight weeks and there's various different starting dates for them. Um, all of their courses are currently remote uh, which means that you can join in from anywhere. Uh, they don't just offer qualifications. The main advantage of their courses is that it really does build confidence and helps you to uh, work with employers to understand the jobs, um, find opportunities at the end of the course and encourages teamwork, which they're managing to do even remotely through some of their group sessions and peer to peer support. Um, today, they were going to be talking to us about retail courses, but they do offer courses across other sectors as well. Um, their main course that they wanted to tell everybody about today was the level one introduction to retail knowledge and level one customer service principles, um, which runs Tuesday, Wednesdays and Thursdays. So three days a week, as mentioned, as part of a six week course. And the topics that are covered as part of these courses include understanding the retail sector, um, customer service within the sector, health, safety, security, and the selling process, control handling and replenishing stock, 
um, understanding teams and how they contribute to the business and handling customer payments. So a really good course if you've been applying for retail jobs that are a little bit oversubscribed, which I know sometimes some of the bigger retailers are, particularly the supermarkets, having a course like this can give you a real advantage on your application form to show that you have committed to a career in retail and that you've got some strong groundwork of the skills and knowledge required. A little bit about how they deliver their courses then at the moment. They are delivered remotely uh, via Teams, Google Classroom or Zoom. They cover all of the platforms to make sure that they don't have technical difficulties um, and they can also um, operate loan schemes for devices as some of the providers have mentioned this morning. Uh, they have an app that allows their tutors to upload all of the resources that you need to work from home and a lot of YouTube videos as well to support you. Um, they have the classroom options to facilitate facilitate some of that team based learning and peer to peer support that we've mentioned. Um, webcams are optional as part of these. Um, so if you sat at home in your PJs and you don't want to share that to the group or you've not put your makeup on as of yet, they don't make you. Um, they have an understanding that learners working from home will have different challenges as we all do at the moment. Um, and they also post out booklets to your home. So they make it really, really accessible for you to start these courses. And as we've mentioned, all of the providers today, their details are on the Stockport Jobs Match website. So if you go to our training section, you can look up Plato as a, a provider within our directory, or you can search for their available courses and they're all online for you to book on today. So all the details are already there, but they'll be sent out after we get finished. Um, so that was short and sweet. As I say, I'll hopefully get Natalie on again later. Um, and next up we have got um, Dean um, from GP Strategies. If you're able to um, jump on Dean. Good morning. Great, I'll just switch you across. Bear with me. There we go. Good morning. How are you? Hi, hi there everyone. Um, my name is Dean Shannon. I, I'm the training programme manager for GP Strategies based in Stockport. Um, GP Strategies, if you don't know, we are part of the G GP Strategies Corporation. We are an award winning global provider that customised performance improvement programmes employing over 3000 people around 25 countries around the world. So it's a very large organisation. Um, which head office is based in Stockport um, for the UK um, apprenticeships and traineeships. So in 1997, GP Strategies was um, a UK apprenticeship division that has 12 offices around the UK with over 300 staff helping to deliver traineeships, apprenticeship programmes and commercial and public sector organisations such as the sector areas we operate in are adult care, childcare, education and business and management. So we offer quite a range of qualifications, jobs and different areas of sectors that we work in. If Caroline could please click the next slide for me, please. Is that on the phone? Sorry, Caroline, could you click the next slide? So at GP Strategies, we've been rated as a good provider by Ofsted with outstanding features and we have a long history of helping people realise their full potentials. Our success rates are among the highest in the country. We have a 96% learner satisfaction rates with at least 9 out of 10 learners rating us as good or better. Over 85% of our apprentices achieve their qualifications and 16% are above the national average. So that's quite a good start for uh, any young person who's looking to come into doing an apprenticeship or a traineeship. Our offer to employers and learners is combined with accredited qualifications, so you're going to get the right qualifications to match a job role. We offer a free recruitment service to employers. We offer local and government funding and incentives for employers currently because there's lots of good incentives for employers and government funding towards the training. So now's the time for the employers to jump on board with their training uh, or looking for um, young people to come into business. We, we offer a blended delivery, so that's a combination of online and face-to-face, -face, but in the current climate obviously we 
we tend to be on everything. Most of it's online at the moment, but hopefully very shortly we'll be back to doing some face to face training because I think the bit of the blended and doing a bit of both now the way we should be the way forward. Um, have levy and non levy support. So we've got a full set of team people and people within the business who can support levy and non levy businesses with a levy gifting service as well for Greater Manchester area. Um, and all our systems are digital systems for an easier process. So looking at sign up paperwork, um, any other bits that need to be done digitally can all be done away from an office environment. So it's, it's a very, very easy process. So the GP strategy Stockport office, we specialise in a wide range of traineeships and the training, training programme managers. So my core area is the traineeship, the front end of the apprenticeship, but it's vital that that young people out there know about the, the traineeship offer because I think someone previous to me has touched on this um, this at the moment because there is a lot of young people out there trying to get the apprenticeship. So maybe the traineeship might be the route into the apprenticeship. Currently up to now, we've got 100% success rate moving people from traineeships into apprenticeships. So it's a good it's a good model for any young person. It's a bit like something that gives you an opportunity to try something before you move on to the next stage of your career pathway. So like I said earlier on, we do childcare and education, adult care, business administration, customer service and leadership and management. Up to date, we've placed over 7,000 apprentices um, into job roles. We've got a continuous flow of traineeship and apprenticeship jobs coming towards us daily and that changes. So please have a look on our website and have a look at um, Indeed and get my first job because that's where most of the jobs will be advertised. So if you want to move on, Carly. So here's just an example of one, one of the qualifications that we offer. We offer a customer service apprenticeship. We do a customer service practitioner level two and customer service specialist level three. Obviously, it's only one of the many, many qualifications we offer. I didn't want to put slides together for to show you every single one because I'll be here all day. Um, our head office for Stockport, like I said, Stockport is the is the main office for the whole UK. It's a head office on level six of the in Kingsgate House um, on Wellington Road, which is just up from the town centre, um, is the is the main admin office, and then level four within that building is. Um, it's the traineeship and recruitment area um, for the hub for traineeships, which currently is closed at the moment because of COVID. But once we, once we got out the back end of COVID, that will be back open and we'll be inviting people in there for signing up and wanting to do traineeships and apprenticeships. So next slide, Caroline. So for you that don't, for anybody that doesn't know our head office, there's the head office there. If you come up from the town centre up past Debenhams, walk up the hill, it's directly on your right. So we're based, Stockport is the main hub. Like I said, level six there for um, admin team and level four for for our team, for the, for the recruitment team and for apprenticeships and traineeships. All live traineeship and apprenticeship vacancies are on our website, which is www gpstl slash sorry hyphen apprenticeships.co.uk and also for an employers out there if you're looking to recruit a trainee or an apprentice please contact myself or our ARC recruitment team at the telephone number above which is 03301000610 or the apprenticeship service or myself Dean Shannon at gpstrategies.com. At the end of the day all advice and guidance is free. We're here to help the employers, we're also here to help young people get into employment. That's what we're here for, that's the reason why I've came into the training game, this is why we're here and everybody together, combined together here, hopefully we'll be here to help you going forward. So please do get in touch. Thank you very much for the time.
Great. Thanks, Dean. Thanks for joining us this morning. That was great. Um, I think that brings us to the end of our presentations now from um, training providers. Um, so we're going to be jumping on now to hear from some employers um, discussing their live jobs, their organisations and what they have to offer as a business, as well as some industry experts talking about a day in the life of their jobs and what they involve. Um, first up, I just have um, a notice that's come through um, from the Sky office office in Stockport to tell you about. Um, they have a customer service apprenticeship opening day, um, a digital insight day next Thursday, the 11th of March, 4 p.m. till 6 p.m. And uh, that will be an online event where they'll explain a little bit more about customer service within their business and their culture and values over at Sky. And uh, they'll have some examples from apprenticeships that have taken part in their programmes previously, um, talking about what they've learned and what their journey has been so far. They'll also explain a little bit more about the application process and give you some handy hints and tips as to how to apply and what might be involved in some of the interview stages. And you'll have the opportunity to meet with existing um, colleagues and to ask them questions. So you need to register, I think, by Sunday to sign up to that Digital Insight Day. But that's a fantastic opportunity to join one of our bigger employers within the Stockport area. So be sure to check that one out. And then next up, we have a presentation uh, from um, Charlotte over at um, Jobs for Teens, who's going to be talking to us this morning about her experience within the retail sector, as well as explaining a little bit more about Jobs for Teens and what that involves. Um, Charlotte isn't able to join us live, so her audio is going to be streamed in now, uh, but you will just see her presentation on screen. So I'll hand you over to Charlotte now. But, um, sorry about the technical issues, obviously, unfortunately you can't see me, but it's fine, we'll work with it. And I'm here today to share a bit about my background with you all and talk about my career in, retail, in the retail sector and how it has led me to where I am today. I will also be explaining about the current company I work for, which is just for teens, and how we can help young people and employees on their journey. So firstly, I'm going to start by telling you what interested me to actually work into the retail sector. So firstly, I was um, about 17 and I was studying at college, working part time in a restaurant and decided retail would be a good option for me. Um, as it was flexible hours, it offered weekend work, evening work, half days um, and it would go work around my college so I decided to start looking on websites on job search places such as Indeed, Total Jobs and Read to see what options were out there in retail and when I was applying um, most applications was literally just you need to upload your CV with a covering letter um, and I applied for a couple and I heard back from, I eventually heard back from Pandora about a sales assistant role asking me would I like to come into an interview. So obviously I ended up going in for the interview but I'll explain more about that in a minute. But what I'd say is when you're apply, applying, it was most of them was just a covering letter and obviously you see you on the application but some did obviously involve like a questionnaire, you know, find out a bit more about your career remember, I don't know if this is still the same because obviously it's a good couple of years ago now, or five years ago, but it was like, it asked you like a mini, like a mini questionnaire, um, but you know, most are just receiving and covering letters, so if you've always got, make sure you've got a covering letter and a CV, up to date, you're like, you're, that's probably the most you're going to need for retail. So I'm now going to go and talk about what qualifications and skills and experience I needed to get the job. Um, with retail, I'd probably say when applying for that specific role at Pandora, um, I needed three or more A to Z grades, preferably including English and maths, if not um, both, at least one. Um, I, would, I know it's now not A to C and it's numbers, but I'm not too sure what that is. Um, but you know, it's A to C. Um, it was more 
I'd say with experience, it was more based on the person's specification, such as your abilities, your professional approach, your passion, your confidence. So I wouldn't say you need previous experience to go into retail. You can, you know, you can be expecting you not to have it, but just obviously I'm going to tell you about the interview process now. It's all about the way you deliver yourself. So we'll go on to now. I can say about the interview process and how it was for me at Pandora and I think it's quite similar for everybody but the interview at Pandora was fairly simple I was asked to come in for a face-to-face -face interview it was with two managers the interview lasted approximately around half an hour and um, questions were more focused on like my personality and um, the brand what I could bring to the company they asked me what could I give examples of maybe like working in a team um, so it was just more questions like that um, just to give you an idea on questions I remember the management being very welcoming feeling the interview ran smoothly I've also spoke to other friends who worked in retail and they said the same that's kind of what you expected so I left the interview and then I was told it being touched over the next couple of days which I think is mainly how most interviews go they'd say they'll be in touch over the next couple of days um it's very rare that they'll offer you the job there and then so don't be disheartened just wait for the phone call um i then remember receiving the phone call and they asked me to come in for an induction day the following saturday um after i completed the induction day i was then offered the sales assistant role and was given a start date sometimes they won't do an induction day not all employers do an induction day but what i would say is if they do do an induction day just remember that it's your time to shine so make a good impression because you know you're most likely then going to get the job um i'm now going to go on to say how i prepared for an interview so that how i prepared for that interview i was i would always advise in any interview um that you make sure you research the company and find out as much as you can about the products and what their expectations and values are as a company. This always makes a brilliant impression on employers love it when the candidate has done the research because it just gives you that head start. You get the, the couple of brownie points, you've done your research and it shows you're committed to the role you've applied for and you're not just applying for anything. To make sure you're showing a professional approach, I would also make sure, always make sure you're looking smart, smart dress, smart appearance. And I would always, always advise that when going to an interview, just give yourself plenty of time to travel because you don't know what's going to go on that day and honestly doesn't look good if you're late. So I'd always have plenty of time to travel and at least arrive 20 minutes prior to your interview slot um, I would always advise that um, if you've not can we go to the next slide now Caroline if that's okay yeah um, so what skills I developed whilst working in retail um, whilst working at Pandora I developed lots of skills but the main skill was as a custom service dealing with the general public I also learned how to work well under pressure um, as it was a fast paced environment which you can probably imagine at, at, at Pandora is very busy at certain times of the year, your Mother's Day, your Christmas but I would always say retail is always busy at Christmas so you're going to learn how to work well under pressure and you know it's it's, it's definitely good. Um, I learned how to communicate with all different types of customers, staff members in a professional manner um, and also I learned how to work in a team because it's a, retail is obviously a team effort. They were the main skills but I learned a lot in retail, um, life skills you just pick up because like I say you're working with the general public so you pick up a lot. Um, I'm now going to talk about what training I received whilst working in retail. When I first started at Pandora, I went on two training courses. Um, they were both outside the workplace. Um, one was called Welcome to Pandora and the other one was called Pandora's Way of Selling. The courses were to learn all about the history of Pandora and the products and what I would be selling. I also received 
um, floor training where I shadowed someone for the first couple of shifts and starting at Pandora to learn the tales, obviously, where everything was kept um, and just see the way the shop run. And I think that's in most retail because you, you're you not expected to know it. You'll always be given training. Um, but at, throughout my time, my five years at Pandora, we'd be offered road shows. We, we had um, an online training course where we learned all about the new stuff that was coming out. Um, and yeah, so I just, I'd say retail, you're always going to, be given good training because it's all about your customer service and you need to know the way their the way their values and stuff work so that was my training but i'd always say you, you receive good training in retail um i'm now going to tell you a bit what a typical day involved in retail for me at pandora um so a typical day at pandora was Greeting the customers, making sure all the jewellery on display was correct, straight and clean for when the customers were coming into the shop. Um, I had to help customers with any inquiries they had, show the customers projects they wanted to see and let them try them on. If they wasn't sure, maybe recommend other products similar. I had to make sure I was hitting my daily targets. Um, that was like a typical day, but I'd say a typical day in retail is it's a, just your customer service. You just need to um, like make sure you're giving excellent customer service and that's all the last it's got for you. And playing a big part in a team, obviously playing teamwork is a big part of retail. Um, so, and now I'm going to talk to you about how my career progressed and where my career has taken me to taking me now. So where you can sort of go just after retail. Um, I decided after five years working at Pandora, it was time to start looking for other options and career paths. Um, I would worked four years full time and needed I needed a change and a new challenge. As much as I love working at Pandora and I've built so many relationships with customers and staff members, that it was time to start um, exploring new options. And I wanted to use my skills that I developed in retail and put them to good use in a different environment. So when I saw my role that I'm currently in now, um, advertised, I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to put them to good use, as my job now is business development manager. And this involves building and creating strong client relationships and working in a team. Um, so th there's lots of different paths you can go down from retail, like I know Caroline mentioned before, but honestly, there's so many. So retail is a good starting point and it opens so many doors for you that you just wouldn't even think. Um, so that obviously as much as I can really say today about Pandora and my retail experience, obviously I'm happy to tell you more if you wanted to contact me separate, but I'm now going to go on to tell you about more about jobs for teens and what we do and how we can help you. Yeah? Um, if you can just pop to the next slide now, Caroline. Yep. So I'm going to tell you how we help um, young people. So Jobs for Teens is a subscription service for staff recruitment. Um, so Jobs for Teens, we help young people um, find employment. We are passionate about matching local teens with local jobs. We're a support-based company. Um, obviously, Greater Manchester, but we actually do help teenagers all over the UK. We are national. Um, we have currently have over twenty thousand registered candidates with us, um, which are already registered. So the way that means they're on our database. So as soon as any jobs come up in our local area, we we've, we've been in touch with you for the first to know. So all you have to do is literally pop online um, on www.justforteens and register with us under the teenager section. Um, and it will ask you some basic information, but it just enables us to contact you as soon as any jobs come up in your local area. Um, we here at Just Teens will help with um, any interview inquiries you have, any CV inquiries, any employment inquiries you have. We, we, we literally can help young people from the age of 13 up until I'd say even 19, 20, 21 even into work and we literally 
all you need to do is literally register with us and then you would find out if you'd be the first to know about any job. It does, we help with um, we cover full time, part time, apprenticeships, traineeships, work experience. We can help with whatever sort of you're looking for. In for an employer side, we can help if you're looking for to employ young people in your business. We have thousands of teenagers looking for work. I know people say, oh, teenagers aren't looking for work, but we have the proof that they are. We have at least 30 new registrations a day. So, yeah, um, from just the team side, I'd just head over to our website, register, and we can help you from there. All our jobs are also listed under our website. It says few current jobs, and you can see all the live jobs that we have. And we add new ones all the time. As soon as we've had some, we'll send you out an uh, email to say there's some new jobs at the time. So, yeah, if we can help you guys, head over to Jobs for Teens and website and we can start helping you. And that's it for today. But if you have any inquiries at all to do with Jobs for Teens, anything to do with retail, I'm here to help. Just, just drop me an email at charlotte at jobsforteens.co.uk. That's brilliant. Thanks very much, Charlotte. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Caroline. OK, next up, we're going to be hearing from Alicia at the Growth Company. There we go. Alicia, if you can just unmute yourself, you should be live now. That's great, thank you. So we can move on to the first slide, Caroline. So guys, my name's Alicia. I am the recruitment manager from The Grove Company. Um, we're an award-winning organisation based within the Manchester City Centre, but we also have offices um, in Sheffield, Preston, and most recently South Yorkshire as well. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about The Grove Company, a little bit about what we do, um, and then I'll talk about how we can help you guys potentially moving forward. So the, the, the biggest thing to know about The Grove Company is everything we do is about investing back into Manchester and Greater Manchester as an area and investing into our people and the staff that work from us. So we're a not-for-profit award-winning business that means everything money-wise that we make gets invested straight back into the business we do not profit at all so the more money we make the more that we invest into manchester as a whole um the business itself we're driven by our values and our core values are to make a difference to be stronger together to empower people do the right thing and to build on our success so as a not-for-profit, the growth company is proud to be driven by that, not our shareholders. Although we're commercially focused and we are entrepreneurial, our values define who we are and where we want to be in the future. And the, the, the biggest, the biggest um, most important thing for the growth company at the moment is to bring in the right people and to help an industry where you know you guys may be struggling to find a role that will give you an opportunity with the experience that you have um, and, and we're here to try and support that and that's why we're looking for people just like yourselves that may have minimal experience but we can support you into trying to get you within employment and if we can't get you to um, within employment with ourselves we can talk to you and give you some options about apprenticeships through the growth company because the great thing about us is we're not just here as an employer we offer lots of different services to people within the Manchester area and um, Caroline if you want to move on to the next slide so as I said earlier people are our biggest success um, we work with a broad range of candidates within all different skills and backgrounds and we are aiming to be a, a more diverse business. We're really focusing on our equality, diversity and inclusion at the moment. Um, 
uh, and we're specifically focusing communities where they may be undervalued or underappreciated so that we can support you into bringing you into a business where we really care about you we can develop you and we can invest in you now we've got a number of vacancies available at the moment um, with regards to COVID everything that we are doing as a business is digital at the moment so any kind of interviews or any roles that you're reviewing the great thing about it is everything is virtual at the moment so we can really um, we can eliminate that um, needing to travel around and traveling into our city centre office. Um, Caroline if you want to move on to our next slide so we've got we on on average recruit around 40 different vacancies a month a, a good proportion of those are for people with skills and experience but we also have a, a high number where we're looking for entry level people so people who may want to do an apprenticeship or people who um, have worked within retail or hospitality um, and may be furloughed or wanting to maybe move out of the area due to everything that's happened due to the pandemic. We're looking specifically over the next couple of months for candidates with really great transferable skills who can put those skills that they've learned within retail and hospitality into becoming a work coach. And what that means is you will help people that have been unemployed for at least three months into helping them find a new role. You'll be supporting them by writing CVs with them, helping candidates apply for vacancies that are suitable for them just general kind of coaching to get those people back out to work and over the next six months we're anticipating helping in the next six to twelve months I'd say sorry that we're anticipating that we'll help over a hundred thousand people get back out into the work environment and that's completely on the back of everything that's happened due to the COVID pandemic um, so we really are looking for people with some great transferable skills that can put those skills to use and help people, you know, who, who may be struggling, um, have lost the role, have been made redundant or are on furlough and have no visibility on when they may be coming back. As an employer, we offer really great benefits. So we offer flexible working. What that means is our, our business operates the core hours are between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. So depending on your diary, you, you basically will plan your day around your diary. So you can, your hours will fall anywhere between there. So if you're in a role where you don't have to be logged on by nine o'clock, if you are an early bird and want to work seven till three, then that, that's absolutely great. You can do that. If you've got children um, and are struggling to find a role where you've got that flexibility to take your children to school or to nursery or you're a carer or anything, you can you have that flexibility with us. You, you don't have to tell us when you're logging off. As long as you do 37 hours that week, it, it's, it's absolutely fine by us. We give you that trust. Um, we offer so many other great benefits, 25 days annual leave, um, every Wednesday the whole of the Grove company has two hours off between one and three um, and that's it's called Wellbeing Wednesday. Um, our CEO introduced that and that's just to give us a, a midweek break. You absolutely cannot log on your system or anything and it's like a little mini holiday during your week and just things like that just show how much a business cares for you and, and values you as a person it's such a great I know it's only two hours um but during the week it just it just breaks your week up and it just gives you that time to step away freely and know that there isn't anybody that's going to be trying to call you or ring you during that time as we all know we can get caught up during lunch hours especially now we're working remotely and digitally um, so they're just a number of the benefits that we offer um, everything about us is to invest into our people um, so you know we are a really great provider and we're a great business to work for um, we now have all of our roles live on the Grove Co company website which I've, I've put a link there on this slide I've also put some details for my team directly that they're there for any kind of careers advice so if you see a vacancy and you're unsure whether you should apply for it or you just want a bit of advice 
absolutely call that number and you'll get through to one of the recruitment team. Um, alternatively, you can email us on the careers website as well. Um, but everything is listed on the Grove Company website. So we'd love to hear from you if you've got any questions at all. And that's everything from me, Caroline. Great. Thanks very much, Alicia. That was fantastic. I really like the sounds of Wellbeing Wednesdays. They sound absolutely fantastic. Um, and there's a, a great number of job vacancies on offer there for a range of different skill levels and um, work types. Absolutely. And I think, you know, we, we'd rather hear from you if you've got any kind of queries or you want a bit more information or if you just want to know how you can even get, you know, yourself into that kind of industry, we can give some tips and advice. So we're really, really welcome to any kind of questions. Oh, that's perfect. Thank you very much. Thanks, um, Thanks, Alicia. Um, coming up next, we have um, Chris from the um, Service Expert. If I can just switch him over. If you just bear with me one second, Chris, if you're there, if you can just um, unmute, that would be great. Hey Caroline, here I am. <laughs> Hi, I'll switch you on now. Thanks very much, Chris. You had me starting to panic then. <laughs> All good. All right, so hi everyone. My name's Chris um, from the Service Expert. Um, thanks for having me today. Hope you're enjoying the day so far. I've been listening along and there's loads of really um, fantastic information um, coming out in the, in the presentation. So just to tell you a little bit about the Service Expert, uh, and myself, first of all, so I'm the co-founder of the Service Expert, along with Alexandra Meller. Um, and we're actually quite new. So we started the Service Expert just a few months ago. But between us, we've actually got nearly 40 years in the service industry. Um, between us, that is. <laughs> and that's in, in different sectors. Um, so uh, we have experience between us in um, hair and beauty, um, retail, uh, travel and hospitality um, and also aviation as well. Um, so what we do at the Service Expert is we work with small businesses to um, and really enhance and level up their customer experience um, and also work with them their, with their leaders within the business. Uh, Caroline, if we can just go back one slide. So there should be one with there. There I am. Yes, we'll keep that one for now. <laughs> um, so yes, that's what we do at The Service Expert. You'll be able to find us on Instagram at The Service Expert, um, on Facebook, The Service Expert, and we're also at theserviceexpert.co.uk. So just to give you a little bit of background about myself, um, so I have been working in the customer service industry since 2002. Um, I started working for Tony and Guy. And if you don't know Tony and Guy, they are um, one of the biggest hairdressing companies in the world. Um, and I'm actually 19 years on, I'm actually working for Tony Tony and Guy again now, but there's been a, um, a huge uh, gap in the middle where I've been off and done lots of different things within the service industry. Um, so after leaving um, Tony and Guy initially back in around 2009 and 10, um, I then moved on to work for Thomas Cook Airlines, that's sadly no longer around anymore. Um, and then I went to work for EasyJet where I was a cabin manager and also a recruitment assessor. Um, more recently, I spent five years working for the National Carrier of Australia as a customer service manager, and I was responsible for the in-flight service on the A380, which is um, the biggest passenger airliner in the world, and also the Boeing 787 Dreamliner. That was in the news a lot because we were actually the first commercial flight between the UK and Australia. Um, I'm a small business owner myself, so I own, a, I own a company called Workout Away Fitness Holidays. And what we do is we provide fitness holidays, breaks um, and events in the UK and overseas for our customers. Um, we can um, scoot across to the next slide, please now, Caroline. So here we are. These are your top 10 um, top performers in 2020 from a customer service perspective. Um, and these companies were ranked by the Institute of Customer Service, who um, released a really interesting but quite lengthy uh, study just recently. So I've just extracted this info for you. So number one, First Direct, they are a bank um, and I haven't actually used any of their services personally myself, but I'm pretty confident that um, you guys watching today will be a user or a customer of at 
least one, if not more of the brands that you can see on the screen now. So John Lewis, um, so John Lewis and Waitrose are actually the same company, if you didn't know. Um, and I have over the years worked for both John Lewis and Waitrose. And if you walk into a John Lewis store, it's really obvious that the customer service provided by their team members is just fantastic um, in uh, comparison to some of their competitors. M&S, everybody knows M&S. Um, still a huge brand on our high street. Amazon as well, so that uh, Amazon were spoken about a little bit earlier. Um, Amazon are just about to open their first store actually in London this week. It's all being kept um, a little bit of a secret, I think, but the cat was out the bag over the last couple of days. Um, and there's a little bit on the news about um, that store opening in Ealing, which is where I live. So I'm super excited about that. Um, and basically Amazon um, are opening a store whereby you will, um, you'll be tracked as you go in through your app and then you remove an item from the shelf and you'll be automatically built to your account. Um, there's no checkouts, but there'll still be some customer service staff on the floor to help you with um, inquiries and things like that. So it really demonstrates Amazon's commitment to customer service um, in the way that they are constantly creating these new ways for us to shop as customers. Number six, pets at home. I feel like I'm the only person in lockdown that didn't get a dog. I would love a dog, but unfortunately at the moment I can't have one because I've got a pretty busy life. I don't get Tesco Mobile, Netflix, everybody's got a Netflix account, right? Um, and then we've got Aldi and Costa Coffee on there as well. So um, this slide, the reason that I've picked this slide um, is because if you guys are looking for, if you guys are really keen on a career within customer service, these brands may be the brands um, to have a look at. A lot of these companies advertise their jobs through their, um, on their, on the career section of their websites. Um, and what you can do with a lot of these brands um, is actually go on there and set up job alerts. So when positions come available that fit your profile, um, you'll get an email and be notified about them. A really great way of keeping your um, finger on the pulse when it comes to job searching. Thank you, Caroline. So great customer service as defined by us at The Service Expert. Number one, when a business goes out of their way to make things better for their customers. And I think that's really the number one thing that any business um, should should address in the very early stages, because ultimately as, as a service provider to people, we are here to solve problems for those people um, and to provide a service. Um, number two, the customer experience far surpasses the, the, the customer's expectation and feels personal. That is all about delivering a level of service that is um, better than your competitors, basically. And I think, and feels personal. So that's a really interesting point. We've all been locked away for nearly a year now and we're all dying for those personal experiences. And I think definitely at the end of um, our, our lockdown, at the end of COVID, people are really looking for a personal touch when it comes to uh, shopping for their products and services. And number three, when a, uh, when a customer speaks positively about their experience with others. So that's really about becoming an advocate. A lot of um, big companies use NPS, which stands for Net Promoter Score, to measure the customer satisfaction within their business. And those customers that score a nine or a 10 um, are really likely to tell everybody else about their experience. I know that we have influencers on Instagram now, but real influencers are people that genuinely have those conversations about brands that they've had amazing experiences with, with their friends and family. Thank you, Caroline. So what I wanted to do now is just take a few minutes. Um, I've given you a little bit of background on us, what we do and on the service industry. But now let's talk about how you can actually start applying for jobs within the industry, how to um, map out your CV and then take that forward through to interviews. So number one, make your CV stand out. And I've gone in brackets there visually. So obviously it goes without saying that the content of your CV needs to be of a really high level and needs to accurately um, display all of your qualities, skills and experience. But um, when I get CVs now, um, I'm starting to see more CVs that are standing out from a visual perspective. And I think that's really important. Now, design is something that's very um, much down to personal taste. I've, I've been asked by people, should I have a, a picture on my CV? Should I not have a picture on my CV? And it really is up to you. Personally, I do have one on my CV um, because I think these things uh, really make your CV stand out when it lands on a recruiter's desk or desktop. 
Um, Canva is an absolutely amazing tool to uh, design your CVs. It's free and they've got some templates that are literally ready to go and you can just put your information on there to create yourself a really beautiful CV that will make you stand out against other candidates. Number two, why uh, make it clear why you want to work for that company in particular. So, um, it's no longer enough to just submit the same CV to lots of different companies and just do a CV drop of loads of different companies if you like. You really need to start looking at tailoring your CV or cover letter to that particular company. So have a look at the company, have a look at the job description and start to use some of their wording and terminology to demonstrate that you'll be a really good fit for that company. And number three, follow up on your application. So that can be a little bit easier if you're applying for jobs within small or medium sized businesses. It's always great to just pick up the phone and have a conversation. And um, these days we do everything by email, but I think making a real personal connection is super important as well. So if you can do, follow up on your application. And number four, be prepared, but not robotic at interviews and show the real you. So do your research, learn about that brand, learn about the company, learn about their values and all that, all that really important stuff. But when you actually come to interview for that position, yes, it's important to demonstrate all of those things that you've learned, but don't let that overpower your personality and your character because in the service industry we look for real fantastic people that have got loads of personality and character because ultimately they are the people that will be able to connect with customers and number five act on feedback and continually develop yourself so this goes for if you get the job or if you unfortunately don't get the job we'll all be um unfortunately rejected from positions, but we need to carry on um, and pick ourselves back up and continue continually develop ourselves. There's loads of free education online. Um, I'm sure that um, great that the um, that you'll be able to find lots of um, links to free education through 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 this uh, virtual careers fair. Um, and it's really important that you just really keep your finger on the pulse and continually develop yourself and take feedback, not personally, but take it as something that you can really move forward um, to, to open your opportunities up further. Thank you, Caroline. Next slide. So that's it from me. Um, there's our social links again. So please give us a follow at the Service Expert on Instagram. Uh, we release lots of different little tips, tricks and advice daily um, and you might just find something useful on there for yourself. We're also on Facebook at The Service Expert. I wish you guys all the best of luck in finding your pathway into your ideal career or role and um, hopefully I'll see you guys again soon. Thank you. Great, thanks Chris. There were some really great hints and tips there, so I'm sure everybody got a lot out of that and it's really nice to hear from somebody firsthand who's worked within the industry. Um, next up we have um, Catherine from um, Marks and Spencers who's going to tell us a little bit about, um, and they were obviously on um, Chris's um, top 10 list of customer brands, so it's a, it's a great way to le lead into things. Um, I'll pop you live now, Catherine. Thanks very much. Morning, everybody, and thank you very much for having me on today. Um, so my name is Catherine and I've worked in the retail sector for 22 years now. And I'm going to talk through a little bit about my life in MS today and what draws me and, you know, a lot of my colleagues and peers to retail and some of our hints and tips of getting into the industry. Um, but I guess what I would say is that whilst, you know, I'm obviously representing Marks and Spencers here today, a lot of what I'll talk about today is fairly generic across the retail sector, whether that's supermarket or other large companies um, within the industry. So um, please feel free to apply it um, across any of the sector, really. Um, you know, and we are really keen um, as a retail sector to get as many new people as possible coming and working in this service industry. And I probably reiterate that it is, you know, classified as a service industry because 90% of what we do is focused on the customer, whether you are working as a customer assistant or like myself as a store manager of one of the largest shops in the country. Um, our primary aim in life is to 
make our customers as happy as possible. And uh, Christopher, thank you. You actually covered off some of my stuff today around uh, the MPS um, score factor and you know really working towards customers being the most natural marketing tool that we have in the retail industry. And it is very much about the interaction that individuals have with our teams on a day to day basis that make the difference in whether they choose to shop with Marks and Spencers or whether they choose to go to Tesco's or John Lewis or wherever it may be um, from a day to day basis. And that's how we fundamentally grow our businesses within the service industry. So a little bit about retail and why would you want to come and join the retail industry? I think you know as I said I've been with the business for 22 years but within my career I have probably done six different very very different jobs and that is one of the reasons that I really really encourage people to come into the retail industry is because everybody tends to associate it with you know seeing somebody working on the shop floor um, serving the customer working on a till working on a fitting room that kind of thing but actually the retail industry is so broad so if i take just within my store i have many different sectors within that um so we have a hospitality industry we have a food industry and we have a clothing and home industry and within that we have specialist areas for example home furnishings where we have specialists who sell and work on advising customers the same as you would if you walked into somewhere like dfs or somewhere like that um, we have specialist bra fitters who probably have one of the most rewarding jobs in the industry um, helping and servicing people to get the right bra is a massive massive thing if you take for example somebody who's just been into hospital to have a you know a, a major operation maybe linked to cancer something like that and the one thing that they need is somebody to be there for them to guide them on the next part of their recovery journey which will be getting the right bar, bra to fit them and work through um, the parts of the job from that respect are some of the most rewarding hours days that you will have within the job and you know we talk a lot in within our teams in the stores around actually why why do you come to work each day what is it that you talk about when you get home in the evening and it is that interaction with the customer that people always talk about what have i done today who for help today and we've had you know this year has been the most different year that we've ever had um but again one of the things that my team will talk to me most about is how customers come in and they've been the only people they've seen that they've made what feels like new friends um through the customers coming through every day people haven't been able to see their friends and family and therefore they've become really reliant on the retail sector um to give them day-to-day -day contact and really help them with their mental health which has been absolutely phenomenal and the letters we've had in around our team members has been just it brings a tear to your eye and that is the reward you get from working in retail. It doesn't, as I said, matter whether you work in retail as a customer assistant or as a senior leader within the business. Your main drive and passion has got to be to want to help other people. And, you know, in the same way that the NHS do, et cetera, in a, in a just slightly different format, it is the reward that you get from the retail industry. So I think, you know, uh, my one key thing would be if you want to come and work in the retail industry then you have to like people and one of the key things that we look for and people i'll come on to it in a bit more detail is personality um so one of the things that we really really look for is not qualifications is not necessarily even experience we can teach people how to to do most things um, but what we can't teach people to do is to want to have interaction with other people and whether that be your colleagues or the customer, 95% of your job in retail will always be based around interaction with other people. And if that's what you love doing, then you will naturally be great at this job and will naturally be successful within this industry. And, you know, that would be my number one question to to you all is if you can answer that question and that question is a resounding yes then absolutely heading into retail is a great great industry for you to be in you know again retail can give you whatever you want it to give you 
So, you know, if you want a part time job to build up a bit of experience to go on to work in other sectors or develop a further career in retail, then again, any industry and any job interviews you're going to in the future, having some retail experience will give you loads and loads of stories to tell at an interview and loads and loads of examples to pull on that will give you what you need to get through an interview process. So whatever point you are at with your work experience or your career currently, again, I would highly recommend even getting a Saturday job. And that again is the beauty of the retail industry that you know we employ people from six hour contracts just working on a Sunday to work around other jobs or school, college, um, further education, right up to obviously 37 hours a week. Um, you know, another big factor within the retail industry is the hours either suit or don't suit people and that is the reality of it. So there will always be work, weekend working and evening working in retail. Um, that is when the majority of customers come to us because they're not at work at that period of time. So as a service industry in the same way as hospitality, um, we are busy when you know, sort of more office based jobs are at their busiest um, on that reserve cycle. Um, so again, if that kind of hours, um, that kind of working um, week suits you, then again, retail can be a really, really good industry to do that. We have loads and loads of different people working for us. So we start to recruit at from the age of 16 um, as a company. And again, that's fairly standard across the retail sector. Um, which again does tend to be on temporary contact weekends um, with one evening in the week, right up to um, people, you know, I've got still got a large amount of my workforce are over the age of 50 and absolutely adapting and changing on a daily basis to the new technologies um, that are coming through the retail industry at the moment. And retail is never dull. Um, the industry is ever changing and again this year has really really excelled the way in which retail industries have had to use digital platforms and digital networks to really help their customer and service their customer and all of our teams have been retrained three times over this year on various different new bits of technology that have been escalated through the business. And again, when I talk to colleagues in other retail um, business um, matrices, it's, it's exactly the same across the board. So the one thing I can also guarantee you is that you will never, never be bored in the retail industry. No day is ever the same, um, you know, the variety of jobs that you can be involved in are massive. So as we talked about, you know, in any one unit, you can have numerous different areas of the store and depending on how many hours you do and how hungry you are to learn and have a diverse career, you can be involved as much or as little of that as you go through. But training is one of the continuous things that we work on and our teams will have different training each month um, to help them learn about new parts of the business. Um, you know, a current focus that we've got at the moment is around everybody developing a wider understanding about mental health awareness and about diversity and inclusion, um, which has been you know very topical right again across the industry. Um, but, you know, it is a benefit of working for a big company that the level of training that you get is consistent and is rolled out to all levels right across the business. So in terms of getting into the retail industry, um, there are loads and loads of avenues to get into the retail industry. So I myself joined the um, business when I was 80. I came in on our um, young manager scheme. Um, which is now called the School Leaver Scheme, um, which takes people straight from um, A-levels or whether they've been on an apprenticeship previously or whatever avenue, straight into the equivalent of a graduate training scheme. And the windows for the applications for this open in September. And again, that's fairly standard across the industry. Um, so we are currently interviewing for people to start next September. So it always works a year in advance. So the next window will open again this September to start next September onto the scheme. It's exactly the same avenue for our graduate intakes. So we 
open the window again in September and again that closes normally um, beginning of January ready to start interviewing through um, February and March and then the positions start anytime from June through to September. Um, so that is the avenue that you know some people choose to come through if they want a leadership program within that. Um, you know from my personal experience I loved it, it was brilliant. Um, it's very practically based training between 12 months and two years. So you spend most of your time um, on the shop floor um, working with other experienced leaders within the business to really get hands on experience of the job and managing people. I think one piece around retail is the industry over the last few years has changed dramatically. So as a store manager, for example, my role is you know, I am a HR manager, I am a finance manager, I'm an operations manager, um, plus a visual manager, plus a selling manager. Um, I look after every spectrum of the shop. Historically, you would have found that you have very, you have had numerous managers in one building doing very narrow job roles. What retail is about now is diverse, wide leaders who cover multiple um, specialisms within that area. And that part is right the way down through the teams then. So I have deputy managers in this store and then team managers in the shop or department managers as they'll be known in um, sort of other retailers. And again, their job roles would be very, very similar within a more sort of specific area of the of the shop. Um, within that, we do then offer other graduate schemes straight into merchandising or buying. Um, they tend to be London based because that's where our head office is as a company. But we do have other retailers in the Manchester area who will offer similar schemes um, into their direct uh, head office areas. Um, you have an opportunity within retail to live and work wherever you want. Um, so I've spent my life pre having my children um, living and working all over the country, um, which has been absolutely amazing. Um, and I've met so many people through that. Um, lots of my colleagues have worked in our international sectors and have been able to travel the world as part of their job, um, learning different languages and different business skills from across the world, which again is absolutely amazing. Um, so, the, you know, the spectrums are, are absolutely huge. More directly within the Manchester area as a company, our customer service um, sector is based out of Chester. Um, so there's always lots of opportunities there and our people services and HR sector of the business are based in Manchester. Um, so again, we have a lot of roles available for there and many members of our team within the Manchester region. Um, switch in and out of roles within those different sort of sectors of the business to get broader experience and experience different jobs as part of their career um, as we work our way through. But if I'm being completely honest, the majority of my leadership team within the shops that I've managed and worked um, with across the Northwest region have all started their lives as a Christmas temp working 12 hours at a weekend um, at the early stage of their career and they've started being passionate about it and grasped every opportunity that they've had to learn and develop and take responsibility within the shops they were working in and use that to, to develop and progress within the business and again this is really similar across most retail sectors that we absolutely like to promote and develop leaders from within our own businesses. Um, so the majority of leadership roles within Marks and Spencers are filled from people who have developed from within the business. So don't worry if you haven't got a degree or that's not the avenue that you want to take in terms of applying for one of those schemes. Absolutely, the opportunities are still there 100% if you start off doing a part time job on a Saturday or Sunday um, within the retail sector. It's more about your desire and what you put into it is absolutely what you get out of it at the other end of it. In terms of applying for roles um, or jobs within Marks and Spencer, certainly 
are um, advertised nationally. Um, they are advertised on our um, Marks and Spencer's website. Um, there is a recruitment page on there. So you are able to see every scheme, every programme that we run within that. The probably final avenues that I'd just like to mention that we work with are, we work with the Prince's Trust a lot um, to ensure that people who may not want to come through the normal avenues are getting the support that they need to get into work. Um, it's a really, really successful scheme for us and again, a very rewarding scheme to work with. Um, and we have just started working with the new government scheme, Kickstart. Um, so again, through Prince's Trust, we are currently recruiting for applicants to come on to the Kickstart scheme, um, which has been set up by the government to enable and help people to get into work as we come out of this pandemic at the other end. Um, so Manchester Store and um, my shop in Warrington, Gemini, and Bolton store are the three stores in the Northwest Greater Manchester area that are currently recruiting for that and all details for that are on our website. Um, the closing date um, is the 16th of March for those. So if that's something of interest for you, please go on and have a have a look. And um, you never know, I might get to see you face to face in the future um, from that perspective. Um, I think, again, look, we've talked a lot about, in, you know, previous People that have been on us today have talked about interviews and how to prepare for it. As I said, the biggest factor for us when we're recruiting is about personality. Be yourself, be honest. If you're coming into a service sector job, the main question you are always going to get asked and will set the tone for the rest of the interview is why do you want to work in the retail sector? And it's really, really important that you really understand what is your drive to work in the service industry. Um, as I've talked about earlier, the importance of the customer and that interaction within that. Um, you will generally get asked about, you know, difficult situations that you've had to deal with in the past. And don't worry about examples being from the retail sector. It really doesn't matter. If you are just coming out of school or college, um, then think about things that you've done with your friends, um, whether that's you know different sports activities, music activities, whatever is relevant to you that you can talk passionately about will make a massive, massive difference to the interview. If you are thinking about more going down the sort of graduate management leadership training programs, then I would highly recommend having some kind of work experience before you go into that process. Um, the assessment program for that does involve um, presentations, it does involve group activity, um, it involves a formal interview um, over the, across the course of the day. So the more experience you've got to draw on to be able to use as part of that will make you stand out along with your personality as part of the of the process. Um, for all jobs right across the business, the first port will be a basic maths and English assessment online um, before you go through to any face to face interview process within that. Um, but don't worry. Um, they're, they're nothing to worry about. They're, you know, they're nothing any different to anything that you would have been doing through an educational process um, along the way. So again, a lot of people panic and worry about those, but it really is nothing to worry about. It's a, a bit of a basic formality within that. Um, if that is something that you're worried and concerned about, then again, coming through avenues like the Prince's Trust, um, sort of circumnavigate some of that process. Um, so, you know, that might be the avenue that you then choose to um, use as you go through. Um, so that's a little bit for me. Um, I hope that's given you a bit of an overview of why you would want to come and work in the retail sector. Um, like I said, it's kept me occupied for 22 years and I still learn every day. Every day is different to the day before. And, you know, it's I work with a really, really passionate group of people of a completely diverse age, background, etc. And um, it's a bit like working for a giant family in retail. So um, come and join us um, and I hope you enjoy. Thank you. Oh, thanks oh, very thanks much, Catherine. Catherine. That was 
really interesting um, to hear um, an insider experience um, of not only the application process, but what the day to day um, job roles involve. And I'm sure for any of us who've been in, into MS throughout the course of the last 12 months, have really felt that all of the staff there have been a lifeline to us as well in seeing people and getting to chat. So you feel that customer service really coming through the process. So thank you very much indeed for joining us this morning. Um, I'm aware that we're running over time slightly, um, but we've got got um, one more presentation this morning coming up from um, Vitality. So if I can just switch to um, Scott and Connor to tell you a little bit more about the roles that they've got available. Morning. I can only get one of you at a time. So that's um, fine. Who's I'll, going first? I'll go first. I'll pass to Connor. Great. Here you go, Scott. Morning. So uh, my name is Scott. I'm a recruitment associate at Vitality. So I recruit just for Vitality. Um, if you haven't heard about us, we're a private medical insurer and life insurance provider based in the UK. Uh, we do have our core purpose, which is to make people healthier and to enhance and protect their lives. Uh, we're all about rewarding people for making healthy decisions, whether that's our members or our staff as well. So there's quite a lot to us in just insurance. Um, you know, we're very bold, our colour's pink, you know, we're very standoutish compared to our competitors. Um, and was very exciting, it's a very exciting place to work. Um, every role that we do offer, there's some, some of them are on the screen. Uh, they are very fast paced, you know, they're not just standard customer service roles. You do have to think a lot about what you are doing, so it is really stimulating and it does make your day fly by as well. Um, so, we do offer quite comprehensive packages at Vitality, uh, whether that's from customer service or sales. So even if it's your first job out of school or college, uh, you know, if you've been coming from another depart uh, from another industry, uh, the, our basics are uh, very competitive in our industry as well. So they start at 19 and a half thousand, but you, we do offer a strong bonus scheme as well. And there's a lot of different benefits which we do offer that are available to our members, but also our staff members as well. So we make sure that everyone is really looked after, whether you're brand new, if you've been in 10 years, it doesn't matter. We value everyone's input and, you know, you don't have to, you know, have qualifications, have the best experience to come to work at Vitality. We all are about our people, uh, which is one of our values as well, which is great people. Um, so, you know, if you're fresh out of school and you're looking at for a customer service role um, in that sort of financial, in, uh, financial or insurance sector, um, we are definitely probably one of the best employees to come towards and apply for. And again, you know, you don't have to have the best experience or, you know, qualifications. Personality is such a big thing in company culture, you know, so bring yourself to interviews, uh, you know, the, the more of a chat and get to know you are, you know, stringent questions and answering, you know, if we don't expect, you know, to hit tens across the board to be able to get you know, a, a position at Vitality, you know, if you can demonstrate, you know, your personality, you know, you know more about you. And that's definitely the things that we do look for. So we do offer quite um, in-depth trainings. Um, so in each of our roles, there's a minimum of two weeks training because our products are quite complex. So it is all just to make sure that you understand everything that we offer as well. There's, even with working from home at the now, it's kind of the new normal. Before pre-COVID, there was a lot of sort of one-on-one -on -one support. There's even so much more now that we offer. You know, you've got all your colleagues and go to your managers, the coaches. Um, everything is very in-depth. So you, even though you're working from home, you're not alone. There's a very much um, a team spirit, you know, a support, whether you're in the office or again, you're working from home. So in terms of like what we sort of offer to our um, anyone starting at Vitality is on our basic salary. So in customer service, it does start for 19 and a half thousand, whether that's in our Stockport office or our Bournemouth office. Uh, you do get 25 days annual leave as well, and you get bank holidays on top, bank holidays on top of that. You know, you have an option to buy a sell date as well. And it's just a standard a pension contribution scheme. You do also get Vitality health insurance as a standard. And that gives access to all our partners and boards as well, which we'll touch on later. And even just little things like, you know, there's free healthy breakfast in the morning. So if you are running late, we offer free healthy breakfast every day. Um, there's a lot of things like that that make the day, a, it's just a nicer environment to be in. Um, so some of our sort of customer service roles are, are our member care, so our health claims department, 
we've got our vitality program area and our member servicing area. Um, all quite different roles we offer in customer service at Vitality based on Stockport. Um, so we're talking again about some of their responsibilities as well. Um, something that sort of makes us different from our competitors um, for places to work as well is our partners and rewards. So even things like, you know, the rewards you have just from work at Vitality, you know, you can get a you know, weekly drinks and cafe near or you can get Nike Vitality gear, uh, even Waitrose discount and Apple Watches, Amazon Prime. So they're all big companies that we do partner with and people value these, uh, you know, especially Amazon, everyone's really used a lot of it, especially last year due to lockdown. So anything we offer it is very, very comprehensive and people do sort of love these sort of rewards that we do give to them. Um, are you able to click on the next slide? Brilliant. So uh, these are the, um, some of our uh, ambassadors um, and some partners. So we do partner with a lot of uh, people, whether you know the Olympians, uh, you know top of their fields and sports. We've got Joe Roots, we've got Jessica Ennis Hill, Ellie Simmons. Uh, we're very diverse as a brand. You know we do offer more than just insurance. We offer a healthy lifestyle and reward people for that. So we've got you know, the health, our vitality life. We have our vitality invest as well, which is financial services. And we've just recently announced we're moving into car insurance. So we've got vitality car. So we're very fast paced. We're always bringing out new products and services. It's a very diverse environment. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity for progression as well. A lot of people who come to Vitality they do stay here because of because of the opportunity progressions and uh, progression opportunities. Um, most of our management come from within. They are promoted internally, and it's just great to see that people are being rewarded for the work that they put in. Whether you again you're brand new or you've been here ten years, everyone is rewarded for the work they do. We have something called the Star Awards, which sounds a little bit cheesy, where you can nominate your colleagues, again, brand new, or being there 10 years, and they will be rewarded with a weekend break in London, where you put up in a really nice hotel, you will see a show in the West End, and it is for the appreciation for the work you do. So even though we're not the biggest company, you are valued as an individual, and that's why we like people to bring out their personality um, at Vitality. Um, so with regards to the actual recruitment process, um, all of our current vacancies are on our website, which is vitality.co.uk. There's a little tab at the bo uh, top that says careers. Um, that we are all on there. Um, every role must give you a quick telephone interview. Um, we do like to ask what you know about us. We'll definitely do a little bit of research. It's probably the best advice I can give to anyone applying for even a role not in vitality. You know, learn about the company you are applying to. You know, how do you know you want to work with if you don't know what they do? Um, it's definitely probably the best piece of advice we can give. Uh, looking, you know, at their values, you know, not every company has them, but we have nine of them. Uh, you don't need to know what us inside and out will give us war and peace, but as long as you can demonstrate a basic understanding of the role and the company, um, it's definitely sort of a great way to sort of you know, get ahead. And even when you complete a telephone interview, you have what we call a second stage interview, uh, which are done on Microsoft Teams, because unfortunately due to the pandemic, we all are working from home, so we can't bring you to one of our offices. Um, people kind of don't like, you know, having a sort of virtual uh, interview. They're nervous enough, you know, face to face, and especially have to keep looking into a camera. Um, you know, there's a lot of resources that are available to everyone. If you have the internet, go on, you know, YouTube, look at your know, interview techniques, interview prep. Such big helps to everyone. You know, even things from body language. You know, you know who, who to speak at, who to keep eye contact with. Definitely helps. You know, you know just, the interview is probably just as nervous as you are, and it's just more of a so it's an it's an informal chat, it's a conversation. Just don't think of them as interviews. You know, it's having a conversation, they're asking questions, and you're answering them. As long as you bring yourself to the table, that's definitely something that we look for at Vitality. Um, so with regards to actual roles and responsibilities, um, we have got our Con uh, Connor, one of our team managers. So he's just going to talk through uh, some of the day-to-day -day responsibilities of the guys in the department. So I'll just leave there now. Hello. Um, cheers, Scott. So yeah, um, some of the roles that, that we've got at the moment, which Scott's just sort of touched on, um, which, which I can you know, expand on a little bit. If I can just run through some of these benefits that, that our Vitality members and, and employees get, and then we can go back a few slides. I'll be able to talk you through the, the sort of roles that we're here to discuss today. So to, to sort of make light of the roles that 
that I'm going to talk through. These are some of the benefits that people have. So when you hear of vitality, um, you know, you, you see it on the, on, the, on the TV or on the radio, it's all around health and life insurance. Um, so there, there's sort of two aspects to the business. There's the insurance side and the claim side, which is one of the areas where we're looking to recruit. So if someone's looking for a role in something, you know, with a medical background, which involves people making claims on their health insurance, making changes to any plans, things like that, that are very much admin and claim specific, there's roles available for that. But then on the other hand, which is the department that I work in, there's roles which is within the Vitality programme team. So as you may or not know, as you may or, or, you know, know or not know, with, within the, the insurance that you get at Vitality um, comes a, a lot of benefits and a lot of rewards. So for example, if you're active within a week and you do um, workouts from home, go for runs and track them on devices like an Apple Watch, Google Fit, you learn points which will then earn you your rewards. We have a dedicated area um, with up to 130 people in which service them rewards, which is the, the Vitality program team. So that's the team of people that will speak to people on the phone that help customers understand their rewards, help them with technical things relating to their rewards. So for example, if you are active when you are a Vitality customer, and you earn 12 activity points per week, um, totaling 40 within a month. You can have an Apple Watch, which is paid for. Um, if you, for one month, aren't active or you, you, know, you don't achieve the activity points, then you, you'll pay that month for that Apple Watch. So it's all very much about incentivizing people to be healthy. Um, the, the healthier you are, the more rewards that you will get. Um, if you're okay, Caroline, to just go back a couple of slides to the, to the roles, um, which, which we touched on earlier. Um, yeah, so the, the roles that are, we, we, we sort of here to, you know, to present to you guys today are in our sales team. So the sales roles in lead generation, retention and direct sales. So lead generation is, is sort of, you know, self-explanatory, generating leads for the business, finding out people's needs of interest and then handing them over um, to a, a direct sales team. We'll call that person back and talk them through the call and look at setting the insurance up. There's also retention teams as well. So if someone, you know, is thinking about leaving vitality because of a bad journey or the cost of the insurance or anything that, that triggers them to want to leave, we have specialist teams that will sort of have the conversation with them to try and see what we can do to retain them as a customer. Um, <clears throat> and then on the customer service side, as I mentioned earlier, we have roles in member care which is claims roles. So that's people working in our claims team, helping people that want to claim on their health insurance or uh, servicing people that have already claimed and have questions. We've also got roles within our Vitality program team. So that's the technical assistance for all the partner related inquiries. So that's not necessarily insurance focused. That's much more relationship building, customer servicing, supporting people that are using their rewards. So we have a member zone website that people will use to activate their rewards and people will use a member app. And that very much um, drives a lot of our calls and messages on social media around, I can't use my app, it's not working, it keeps crashing, I'm not getting my points, that sort of stuff. So within our social media team, we speak um, roughly to about 12,000 people each month, just about their rewards and, and their planet vitality. So when we speak about recruiting in the Vitality programme team, that's working on the phones. But then within that team, we've also got a technical team and um, there's a social media team, an email team. So there's all sorts of different opportunities, um, you know, depending on the query, the style of communication you want to use and the sort of the, the career path that you're looking for. Um, but all, all these these roles sort of tie in as, as one big family. You know, there's people that work in the social media team now um, that you know all started on the phones at Vitality. There's people in our claims team that started in the lead generation team. So once once you're in the you know the opportunities are endless in terms of looking at different roles and progressing. Um, so hopefully that's you know good good to know and, and reassuring that you know you're not signing up to a, a typical call centre or where you'll you'll be targeting on taking 100 calls a day and speaking to as many people as possible. It's very much about building relationships with our existing customers. Um, and making sure that we're doing everything that we can um, for them, if that makes sense. Um, the, the other stuff I think, you know, Scott sort of sort of went through at the beginning in terms of benefits. So there's the, all the perks of when we're in the office, so the free breakfast, uh, a lovely Starbucks in the canteen, all that sort of stuff. But 
unfortunately we've we've missed out on that for for the last year or so. Um, but yeah, that that's a bit of a bit of information in in the, the day of life at, at Vitality. Well, that's great. Thank you very much indeed, Hannah. Um, that gives a, a good insight into um, a local employer um, and the vacancies on offer. So everyone should be um, sure to check out the links on the Vitality website and hit that careers button and have a look at the vacancies. You can filter by location and see what type of jobs they've got available at the moment. Thank you very much to um, Connor and Scott for joining us this morning. Again, we're quite run over schedule um, because obviously we had a huge amount to get through this morning, but I just want to very briefly um, add in the details of the um, final um, employer that we need to mention today. Um, it just goes to show that there's such fantastic opportunities available within the customer service industry that we've had so much to pack in today. Um, so the final employer is a company called Concentric. So you can't join us live because we've overrun, uh, but wanted me to run through their very brief two slides. They are currently recruiting over 300 job vacancies, um, largely working from home and within the stop Salford and Stretford offices. Here's a little video about their teams and then I'll just fill you in on the details of the jobs and how to apply. There we go. Um, sorry for the technical difficulties. I'm amazed that live streamed in the first place. So at least they gave you an insight into the team environment at Concentrix and some of the advantages that they think are important about joining their team. Um, so as I mentioned, they're recruiting around um, 200 to 300 vacancies uh, by April. Um, they have jobs available in customer service, both inbound and outbound, sales and technical support, covering a range of different sectors. They are largely working from home um, with all IT equipment and full training provided, so you don't need anything to get started. Um, in terms of applicants, you simply need six months experience, but this doesn't have to be in a call centre. It could be within hospitality, the retail sector, an office role or some other kind of customer service related position. Um, as mentioned, the roles are inbound and outbound, um, providing um, customer support and advice on everything from car insurance to mortgages and financial services. They have full-time and part-time roles available working various different shift patterns. Uh, the pay is £8.72 to £10.10 .10 per hour, depending on which campaign you're working on, uh, plus bonuses if it's an outbound position or if it's a target-driven role, which as mentioned, not all of them are. There's some great benefits, paid holidays, individual and team rewards, and some fantastic career prospects as well. Um, so if you're interested in any of those roles, those are available to apply for on the Stockport Jobs Match website. You just head to the jobs link and I think there's some featured jobs on there about Concentrics. If you enter into the first job that you find and click on their logo, it will bring up all of their um, seven or eight different categories of jobs uh, for you to apply for the positions there. 
So thank you very much for persevering and sticking with us on a slightly longer event than planned this morning. Um, hope you find it useful. Uh, make sure that you do um, follow us online using the hashtags GMCW2021 and NCW2021 for Greater Manchester Careers Week and National Careers Week. Um, you can tag us in any of your posts or send us some feedback um, to at JobsMatchSK on Twitter and at Stockport Jobs Match on Facebook and Instagram. Um, you can view more information on our website by going to stockport-jobsmatch.co.uk forward slash career development and downloading some great guides on careers in the sector, as well as finding all of the information from the fantastic guest speakers we've had today. And don't forget to register for our next event tomorrow, 10 till 11.30, when we've got some great guest speakers coming up to talk about careers in the IT and digital sector, including CDL, Music Magpie and Pioneer Group. Thanks very much, everyone. Bye now.